And I greet you to all and welcome you. We also want to salute and greet our online worshippers who have joined us this morning. Greetings to you and welcome, and uh, trust you will enjoy the service with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I wanted to speak to us, I wanted to encourage us along the lines of a strong finish towards 2022. A strong finish towards the end of the year. Seeing so much scope that we are right in the throes of year in, year in preparations, winding down, winding up, etc., etc. I want to speak to us about moving towards a very strong finish for 2022. Amen. It's been a tough year, it's been a challenging year, but uh, I believe that by the grace of God, as we encourage one another, as we pray for each other, that we can and indeed finish the year on a strong note. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'd like to take this portion of scripture from 1 Samuel chapter 30, and I'm going to read various verses from it, verses 1 to 8, verses 18 and 19, but I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with the story. It's the story of David in the place called Ziglag, and the Bible says, now David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved every man for his son and his daughter but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God then David said to Abiathar the priest Ahimelech's son please bring the ephod here to me and Abiathar the priest brought the ephod to David so David inquired of the Lord saying shall I pursue this troop shall I overtake them and he answered David and he said, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, you shall recover all. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. David rescued his two wives, and nothing of theirs was lacking, neither small nor great, sons and daughters, spoil and anything which was taken from them. David recovered all. Hallelujah. We see in this text and in this passage of scripture that David moved from being a gladiator, from being a warrior, to becoming a priest. And we'll speak more into that a little later into the message. How that we need to move from being a warrior to being an intercessor. How that we need to move from the battlefield to the prayer field. There are times when you need to come out of the battlefield and get into the prayer field. We cannot remain on the battlefield indefinitely. In the same way, we cannot remain indefinitely on our knees. There's a time to do and there's a time to pray. So, David was having a bad day, if we bring this in context this morning. And we all have had bad days. If you have lived any length of time on this earth, you will know what it is like to have bad days. But this was no ordinary bad day for David. This was the epitome of bad days. The worst possible scenario that could happen to a man and the worst day certainly of David's life, he's lost everything. He's lost wealth, he's lost home, he's lost family, and he's lost the support of his mighty men. He's lost it all. And in this moment, David learns to encourage himself in the Lord. And I don't know how this year is working out, how it's panned out for you. I don't know where you find yourself this morning. I don't know what battles you fought over the last 11 months, what battles you are still facing, still fighting. I don't know what challenges you have. I don't know how many battles you've won, and I don't know how many you've lost. But from the testimonies we received yesterday, it would appear, praise God, that many of us are winning. We are winning. We are scoring victories, praise God. But where the rest of us are concerned, perhaps this message is synonymous with what you're going through. And so David learns to encourage himself in the Lord. And right now we need to learn to encourage ourselves. If we're going to finish the year strong, we're going to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Because it's customary for people to lose faith along the way, to lose courage along the way, to become tired and fatigued. And we cover that as well in the message this morning. Tiredness can lead to discouragement. And you can find people losing faith, losing victory towards the end of the battle and the end of the year. They say in sport, like in the sport of soccer, most of the worst injuries happen between 90 minutes and 95 minutes. When players are really tired and weary, that's when legs break, ankles are twisted out of shape, etc., etc. And towards the end, we want to finish strong. Praise God for that. So we're going to look at a few 
pointers this morning to encourage us as we work towards a strong finish. Number one, it's okay to cry. Oh, the men are looking at me strange this morning. The men are looking at me strange this, uh, this morning. Um, it's okay to cry. Now, I'm not encouraging us to go out and just have a weeping session instead of a prayer meeting, we have a weeping session. But listen, if you have to go through something like what David went through, you'd weep too. The men wept because they lost their wives and their children. And in the context of the story we read, reading, they had no knowledge of how the end was going to be or what the end would entail. And the message and what we can draw from this is that God knows the end from the beginning. But where they were concerned, they had lost everything. So this was the end. And so they wept because of what they had lost. And even David cried and lifted up his voice to the Lord. So I want to read this portion of scripture to you, Psalm 56 verse 8, and it truly ministered to me. It says here, David says in the psalm, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. God is a God of tears, and he recognizes tears. He knows those many tears that have fallen from your eyes. It may have fallen to the ground. It may have fallen onto soil. But God has kept record of it. The Bible says that he has a bottle with all of these tears in there. And this bottle serves as a reminder of the things that cause us to weep. And there are many tears that we shed. There are tears of joy. I don't know how many of you can identify with that. Then there are tears of grief. As a family, we've lost a loved one in the course of this week. Many tears were shed. Many tears, for that matter. Tears of grief. All the same, God knows. There's tears of frustration. Come on now, it's been a long, hard year. We've also reported victories, but we've also heard some sad stories too of frustrations in people's lives, trying to accomplish things, trying to win battles, but we just record failure after failure. And so there's tears of frustration. Hallelujah. Remember, emotions are an essential part of who we are. You cannot experience true worship and joy without them. God has given us emotions. He hasn't asked us to bury them. But at the same time, emotions are not meant to control us. Emotions are not meant to determine the end of our lives and the end of a situation. Praise God for that. So it's okay to weep. It's okay to shed a few tears. But this is what God says in His Word. Psalm 30 verse 5. For His anger endures for a moment. And in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. So I don't know if you're in a dark period or in a dark place, but the word of the Lord says that joy cometh in the, in the morning. Praise God. Amen. God is writing the chapters of our lives. God is writing the book of our lives. And he knows when to punctuate our lives with a full stop. Or just simply a pause to say, let this chapter end and let a new chapter begin for that matter. But all the same, God is in charge and God is writing the book of our lives. And as I always say, God writes best selves. God writes best selves. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's okay to weep, but listen, our weeping mustn't keep us in the valley of Baca. The valley of Baca is known as a place of weeping. But we don't stay in the belly of a car, we come out of it. And the next point is this that I want to share with us this morning. Never grow bitter. Don't grow bitter through your situation. Matthew 16 verse 12, and it says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In moving towards a strong finish, we must never grow bitter. You will know when people are growing bitter. When people are going through circumstances, you try to help them, you try to counsel with them, you try to talk with them and you say, listen, you've got a shoulder to lean on, let's walk this thing through together, let's talk together. And in the course of their conversation, you hear the bitterness. Mary and Martha revealed their bitterness. When they saw Jesus, the Lord of glory, the God of all answers, instead of looking to him for answers, they looked at him and they said, if only you were here. There's regret. There's that tone of bitterness that's coming through. The regret. If only you were here, this would not have happened. But I want to say to us, let us not grow bitter. You can grow bitter or you can grow bitter out of every and any situation that you're going through. God knows how to work it out. God knows how to draw sweetness from every situation. Samson killed the lion, but in the end he drew honey from out of the lion's carcass. God knows how to draw sweetness from each and every situation. 
situation. And we must be encouraged to believe that good will come out of this. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Never grow bitter. So while David lost almost everything, his men grew bitter and wanted to stone him. But David uh, had to turn to the Lord and he learned to encourage himself in the Lord. Amen. It's amazing how people are in life and in ministry. I don't know in business. Perhaps some business people can uh, attest to this. But as a leader, if you're leading well, they're singing your praises. If you make a mistake, then they come down on you. Really hard. Amen. And Jesus walked the streets of Galilee doing miracles, preaching the good news, and they hailed him. They said, Hail, hey, the King of Israel. Amen. A few days later, they said, Same like people said, Crucify him. Crucify him. Amen. So people are just fickle. They could change with their emotions. And we must learn never to trust in people where emotions are concerned because they can disappoint you. But the point is, never grow bitter. Never grow bitter. On the way to church, uh, no, it was yesterday. Going home from our, after our leadership meeting, we were talking about things and we were talking about certain people in the church and how they've learned to forgive others. And we're talking about forgiveness. We're just talking about how important it is to forgive. How important it is to forgive and to release people. And I was sharing, and I think perhaps for the first time my wife was listening to this side of my story. We're so busy, we don't get time to talk to each other. We talk about other things and other people for that matter. And I said to you, I was reading an article once in which a guy was talking about the love of God. And for that moment, the heavens opened and so did my heart. A lot of times we receive knowledge, but it only enters our mind. As long as it stays in your mind, it's knowledge. But when it falls into your heart, it becomes revelation. And this is something I've known forever. What is this? That God loves me. I have known that life forever in a day. But for the first time in my life, it sunk into my spirit and I lightened up like Eskom. I just came alive and I realized God loves me. Now I can love other people. I can love the unlovable people. Now I can forgive people because God has forgiven me. What was knowledge became a revelation. And when it bursts out of your spirit, you've got something to give and something to release. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I found it easy to release people that I was perhaps harboring grudges toward. You don't realize you're harboring a grudge until you look at what happened. And you keep rehashing the past. If you keep rehashing the past, the hurt is still there. Rehash it, nurse the hurt, and the bitterness remains. Praise God. But when you realize how much God loves you, you can forgive and release people. Now, I don't know what has happened over the course of this year. Now, David could have sat there and he could have uh, uh, processed the situation and he could have said, it's not my fault. I didn't do this. It's not my fault. Someone else came and burned our city down. And he could have just shifted the blame onto other things uh, and other things and moved along like that and just re reshuffled the deck, so to speak. But you know what? He did not grow bitter. And we must be careful that we do not become bitter. So I don't know how the year is going for you. Is it going well or is it going tough? Is it tough? When the tough, when the, when, when the tough times come, I don't know what the tough people do. But I'm cheering with you. Don't get bitter. Don't get bitter over life and over circumstances. David did not blame people. In the Garden of Eden, when God came to Adam, he said, Why have you done this? He said, it's not my fault. He said, it's the woman you made me. Turned to her, looked at her and said, Why have you done this? He says, it's not my fault. It's the serpent. God spoke to him and we know the judgment that God pronounced on the serpent in the garden. But we look for things to blame. We look for people to blame. How's it going so far? Are we blaming things and people as we're going along? Or are we prepared to take ownership for life and how this year is going and how it's about to end? Are we taking ownership? That's important. Let's take ownership. Let's not just hand it over to someone else or something else and say, you know, he's to blame or that's to blame for how it's going. And, uh, you know, just put the blame onto something else. But let us not grow bitter. Let us choose to forgive. Perhaps business deals have failed us, have fallen through the, the cracks in the course of this year. Perhaps it's family, perhaps it's friends. Let's choose to forgive. As we forgive our debts, we forgive. God forgives us of our debts as well. And I was saying to uh, Pastor Lee as we were talking, um, there were so many incidents in my past life over the last couple of years. And God has moved graciously upon my life, cut through all the pain, the headache and the heartache. I've been able to reconcile with family. I've been able to reconcile with my own pastor and other pastoral friends and ministers that we once walked together with and had differences of, of 
opinion or doctrine or whatever, and they went their way and I went my way. Of course I was right, but uh, we just did not <laughs> we didn't want to say that at the time. I'm just getting that this and you know that. But of course, you know, God gives you the grace. And we want to end the year uh, strong. We don't want to be holding grudges and say, you know, I'm holding on to that guy and, and on that situation. Let us not grow bitter. Let us grow better. Because bitterness can give rise to sickness, disease. And listen, bitterness can affect your finances. Let's try these people over here. Bitterness can affect your finances and it can affect your health. Amen. Because it's of the enemy, it's not of God. Hallelujah. Thirdly, let us look at this. Learning to encourage yourself in the Lord. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 11 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And uh, this is a strong point. We've got to learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. I've learned this time and time again. Before COVID, during COVID, church open, church closed, church open, church closed. You know the story of the saga that we had to go through. But you had to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. No one came along. There was no church authority figure to send messages to us ministers to say, Be encouraged. Don't worry. COVID is lifting. They're going to lift the restrictions. It's going to be okay. There was a time we thought it's just going to stay this way. Church will open, church will close till Jesus comes. And you get discouraged and you get discouraged. I don't know about you, but you have to learn to encourage yourself because no one's going to do it for you. I don't know if you're going through something in marriage, something in business, something to do with finances, something to do with your spiritual walk with God. But if you don't do it for yourself, no one's going to do it for you. There was no one to do it there for David. And that's the true mark of Christian maturity and a maturing child of God. It's not a problem to cry. We're not going to look at you and say, that's an image of Christian. I went to him to get a testimony. Instead, he's crying. That's okay to cry if you are. It's okay if you reported a bit of bitterness, but you're dealing with it in your life. And you're saying, Lord, I've root this bitterness. Help me to forgive and to move on. But listen, if you are discouraged and you stay down, that's a sign of immaturity. Because isn't that what children do? Those of you that still got little ones this year, when they start crying, what do they do? They throw themselves down. Thank you. Thank and then they don't get up. They'll wait for an adult to come and say, Come, let me give you sweetie. Come, let Opa love you. Come, let me do this. They don't get up. But that's children. Or what do grown-ups do? Now they say when adults fall, it's not bad. It's just when they keep quiet. You know, adults, older people, they fall and they keep quiet. But here's the thing, if we fall, spiritually speaking, it's a sign of maturity to pick yourself up. I don't know how and I don't know how long it's going to take, but you've got to learn to pick yourself up. You've got to learn to pick up yourself, and this is what David did. He learned to encourage himself in the Lord. And as Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We cannot do it in our own strength. Perhaps you are sitting in your city of Ziglag, discouraged, broken, and there's despair and gloom all around about you. But you've got to learn to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. There, are, there, there is what is known as the four Fs. Fear, failure, frustration, and fatigue. Fear zaps your energy and immobilizes you. Fear zaps your energy and immobilizes you. Failure leads you to spirited. Frustration binds you from the prospect of ever succeeding. And fatigue just tires you out. And in Jeremiah 12 and 5, the Bible says, If you have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? Hallelujah. So it comes back to this thing. You've got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. David in his field learned to encourage himself in the Lord. Paul and Silas in the book of Acts chapter 6, found themselves in prison and at the midnight hour they began to sing praises to God. No one sent them a message from outside. No church members visited with them, but they had to take it upon themselves to begin to lift up the Lord in this set of circumstances. And that's what we can do. I can't change your circumstances. You can't change your circumstances perhaps, but you can lift your voice and you can give Him the highest praise in that circumstance and situation and watch God do it for you. And here's the saying, you may not be able to get out of prison, 
but you can let God into your prison. You may not be able to get out the situation, but you can let God in and he's willing to come in. He's not nervous to visit you in that hospital. He's not nervous to visit you in intensive care. He's not nervous to visit with you in prison. Hallelujah. Wherever you find yourself, he's not nervous. If you can't get out, let him in. And the one, number one way to get him in is through praise and worship because God inhabits the praises of his people and there in that prison god said i'm coming in i'm stepping in the praise is so good down here some of these walls are in the way let's just push them aside he said some of these gates are inhibiting my people from praising me let me just move it aside very soon it was an open floor and like chris Tomlin says god's great dance floor that prison place became god's great dance floor hallelujah learn to encourage yourself in the lord and in that field when david encouraged himself the battle was walking it wasn't when he pursued them that he won the battle the battle was won on his knees in that field in the ashes and in the room it was in that place that the battle was won and I mean, i've said this a couple of weeks ago let me say this again many times we face situations we get the news that something bad something ominous is looming some bad news coming our way and it greets us for the first time but the truth of the matter is god knew about it long in advance it wasn't new to him that's not the good news the good news is still coming the good news is this that god has already determined the outcome Hallelujah. and god decided you're gonna win I, we've learned that during COVID. We've learned that when our people, our family, our friends that grew sick, we said, God, you did not bring the sickness, but you determined the outcome long before the sickness came. And even though it has come, the outcome is determined. I will live, and like David said, I will live and not die, and I will declare the works of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I will live and not die, and I will declare the works of God. God has determined you to win. Hallelujah. His mind is made up. And if you are fully persuaded, and if you align your faith and your prayers with that, you will be in a better position as you go forward. That God has already determined we're going to win, and I'm not going to lose. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and situations. Let's look at the fourth point very quickly. Get a clear word from God. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But happy is he that keeps the law. And the fourth step towards a strong finish is this. Get a clear word from God. Again, can we play open cards? How's it going? If we had to be real and transparent, how's 2022 going? Is it going in the way you want it to go? Are you happy with the results? Are you happy with what's, what uh, kind of results you are yielding? If you've reached the point where you've realized, you know, it's the middle of November or just a little after the middle of November, and man, things are not going well. Somewhere along the line, somewhere along the course of this year, I missed it. This is a time to take this point to heart this morning. Get a clear word from God. So David goes to Abiathar the priest and he says, bring the linen cloth, bring the ephod, and it speaks about seeking God. We're not going to get into the dynamics of wearing the ephod, but David became a priest in his situation. Instead of being pathetic, he became a priest in his situation. And here's the point is to get a clear word from God. Let's get direction. Again, on the way to church this morning, we were talking about life. We were talking about our personal life. We were talking about ministry. And we were talking about the many decisions made in ministry. And one thing we came to, one conclusion we came to, we do not want to make any more decisions without getting a clear word from God. David found himself in a city that was burned down, but when you analyze the story, he was fighting a battle that he was not called to fight. It was what is called presumptuousness. He thought it was a good idea. He thought because he's in this place, he needs to be seen as doing what they were doing. And he joined them in a battle that God did not instruct him to fight. 
And so when he came back, he came back to lost. Now he realizes the error of his way. And he says, I want a clear word from God. I'm not going to take 300 famished men and drag them into battle so tired and so weary. We like you to lose. So he needs to get a clear word from God. You need, you need to get clear instructions if things are not going as well as they should. You may have started off the year saying, God, God said, no, this is God's leading. But halfway through, you've come to the conclusion, perhaps this wasn't God. Perhaps this was me. All me. I was doing this. And now this is the time. This is an opportune time to say, I need a clear word from God. It doesn't matter. We just need a little bit of course directions and we'll get on track. I don't know how many of you travel with this little thing called uh, Suri. I travel with it. I can't go anywhere without her. I just about can make it to the shopping malls and she's left and right. And then she turns to turn left, turn right. And many turns she says, turn right here, but you turn too soon. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. You've turned too soon, you've turned left, whatever. Then she'll say, correction, correction, make a left, make a, turn, make a right down here. So it doesn't matter how late it is in the year for course directions and course correction. It's not too late. You can receive it from God and you can move towards a strong finish. And if it's not going to end up strong, at least you're going to start 2023 on a better note, on better ground, solid ground, and better footing for that matter. So David gets a clear word from God. And this time he says, no, now you go into battle. You shall pursue, and God says, and you shall recover all. Hallelujah. Nothing will stand in your way. So David has a fresh word from God. And uh, it, the Bible uses this expression, he smote them hip and thigh. Now, <laughs> you have to be in all time Pentecostal churches to know what that expression was. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with it. The old R.W. Shambach used to preach like this. And they say, David smoked him, hip and thigh. That means to slaughter mercilessly without sparing blows. Hallelujah. And listen, if we are called to do a battle, this is the way we need to do battle. Blow after blow and not be merciful where the enemy is concerned. In Jesus' name. So David rose up and smote the Amalekites from dusk till dawn. And the Bible says his men were weary. 200 stayed behind because of discouragement. They could not pursue with him in battle. But because he got fresh vision from God, because he encouraged himself in the Lord, he was able to go forward and pursue. And if you're going to experience any more victories between now and December 31st, you need to be encouraged in the Lord and you need to have fresh vision and you focus on God. Hallelujah. Get that glimmer of hope back in your eyes so that you can go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. What are we talking about this morning, church? Finishing 2022 20, on a strong note. And this last point, it's a very short point, but it's so pertinent this morning. It's called letting carry you over the threshold of life. I know as we are reaching year end, there's many decisions to be made. Some of us have made important decisions etc etc but let me read the scripture and i'll just qualify this point and sum it up isaiah 41 verse 10 says fear thou not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you i will help you and i will uphold you with my righteous right hand isaiah 41 verse 10 and there's this portion of scripture I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but from time to time it's such a blessing to one when you are in a dark place. <clears throat> where God says to the Israelites, I carried you on eagle's wings into the promised land. The gist of this point, this final point is this, let him carry you over the threshold. Like the groom carries his bride over the threshold. I don't know where the threshold is, Chris. Is it at the gate or at the door? It all would, all would depend on how strong you are for that matter. I don't know. Wherever the threshold is, you carry the bride over the threshold, wherever that is. So God our Savior, Christ our groom is saying, let me carry you over the threshold. And the threshold, when the groom carries the bride over the threshold, they got married at the altar, the altar somewhere down the road in the church. They got married, they said their I do's, they had paid their 
each other. You know the whole rigmarole when marriage came, fed each other cake. And I'm not going to get into the significance of all of that this morning. We'll save it for another time. They've had the, the first dance. Now he carries her over the threshold. Why is that? Because he's giving her the strength to enter a new season. It's not the same goal that he met at the altar. She was single then. She had no responsibilities back then. No challenges back then. But now as you cross the threshold, I'm going to carry you over into your new season. And you're going to need the strength. She needs to be Mrs. Governor now. She needs to be Mrs. Carrington. She needs to be Mrs. Mannion. And there's a whole lot of challenges that are now coming her way. But he gives her the grace and the strength that he carries her over the threshold. Why am I laboring the point? Because many are entering new seasons. We spoke about new chapters last week, week before. We spoke about entering new seasons. And sometimes it's daunting. Listen to this. Transition can feel like you are out of control. And it, became, it becomes intense as we step into the unknown. Familiarity is absent, which can be disorienting and even frightening. But if we begin to take the lead and trust Him, He will help us make the transition into the new season and new chapter of our life. So here's the point. Let Him carry you over the threshold. Again, maybe, not, maybe many are at the threshold. Here's the line you need to cross over, but it's daunting. You're leaving familiarity behind. You're stepping into the unknown. Perhaps this young lady is wondering, what's in store for me in this marriage? Perhaps she's doubting. Perhaps she's, you know, having a little bit of a doubt there at the threshold. But he carries her over her doubts. He carries her over her fears. He carries her over her worries. Christ, our groom, carries us over into this new season. Let him carry you over the threshold. That's the point this morning. In case you're intimidated, in case you challenge someone, here's the message this morning. Let him carry you over. Because you're hesitating. You're saying, I wonder if this is the right thing. And like what we were talking about this morning, this word just is so synonymous with what we were talking about. Let him carry you over the threshold. You're standing there and you are reasoning and you're trying to rationalize this. And human rationale stands in the way of God's leading. Amen. Let him carry you over the threshold. If you are in a time of transition, trust him. Let him carry you over. Turn your fearful reaction into a faithful response to say, Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. And Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. We good? Good. Hallelujah. Let's flow with that. Let's flow with that. Let's flow with that. Thank you, Lord. Let him carry you over this threshold. Let him carry you over into this new season, this new chapter. Amen this morning. Hallelujah. Let's look to him this morning in prayer. Father, we thank you. Yes. Glorious, glorious, awesome name of Jesus. Father, we pray over the congregation at large. We pray over the families, especially. We bring, oh God, the character of the family to you who have come through and are going through a season of grief. And Father God, we pray that the merciful hand of God be stretched towards them. We pray that the hand of God would come over them and even overshadow them. That the He will carry them over the threshold into a new season, a new dawn, even a new time in the Lord our God. And Father, for this we are truly grateful. We know, God, in your word you said, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you, Lord God. And Father, even as Mary and Martha had regrets, right at the brink of a miracle, right on the verge of a miracle, they still had regrets. You were merciful with them. And you said, if only you will believe, you will see the glory of God. And Father, we pray over the congregation at large, and we say, let them come back to faith once again. Let them put their faith, trust in God again. Their unwavering faith back in God and the Word of God. Father, we pray this this morning in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray towards a strong finish, strong finish, where this year is concerned and where the people of this house are concerned. We give you thanks for this now in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord.